This is another in the series of ultrasound videos from Academy of Ultrasound. Um, you can reach us at www.academyofultrasound.com. We teach ultrasound to technicians, uh, especially those interested in the travel market. Uh, this video is going to come is going to talk about um, the process or typical images taken during an echocardiogram. You'll notice here this is a basic what we call parasternal long image. I'm not the best scan candidate. I don't have the best windows, uh, which is the ultrasound imaging window to get through to show the image. Um, basically what you're looking at is a parasternal image. This is the left ventricle. This is the mitral valve. This is the aortic valve along with the aorta. This would be the image that you would show the doctor to begin the study. Uh, it's called parasternal long of the left ventricle. From this image we would also put on color which you'll notice I hit the color box. I would include it out a little bit and actually show color on the two valves. Then I would turn off color. Then typically most labs will zoom those two valves and again you see here the aortic valve. You see here the mitral valve. At this time we would freeze the image with the aortic valve open and then they would simply take a measurement and that is done by taking LVOT measurement and coming down and measuring from the insertion of one cusp to the insertion of the other cusp and then saving it into the package. Hit 2D button to go back to live video. Typically now we would freeze and take an image and a measurement from what's called the ascending aorta to show that the ascending aorta is not dilated back to 2D. Now with a good cusp separation being shown in the window, the difference between that and this, if you can see close enough, is you can see the aortic valve cusp is actually opening. You would take an M-mode cursor, run down through there, and with here, when you freeze it, you'll notice that you actually have what appears to be two hockey, a hockey, I'm sorry, a football goal post in amongst this tracing of the aorta. This would be aorta. This would be left atrium. We don't do any measurements in M mode typically anymore. Most facilities have gone to taking their measurements in two dimensions or in 2D grayscale. So once you've got that particular image, you would come back to your window, take your M mode cursor and move it to your mitral valve. And this tracing that you see, this up and down motion, is actually showing both the anterior and posterior mitral valve leaflet. Let me go back and take a quick one of that aorta again because I didn't save it. You freeze and save. And then we're going to come over and take an M mode of the left ventricle just past the tips of the mitral valve. And what you'll see in this image is this is the intraventricular septum. This black area is your LV. This bottom area is your posterior wall. And again, we don't take any measurements typically in uh, M mode, but we would go back and get a good solid scan, freeze it. You want to get it to where the ventricle is as wide as it'll get and we're going to take measurements. Those measurements are taking from the ventricular septal wall to the end of the ventricular septal wall down to the beginning of the posterior wall and down to the end of the posterior wall. You'll notice up here I don't know if the measurements will come out in the video but I have measurements for the interventricular septum at 1.4 the LVID, which is left ventricle internal dimension, 4.6 centimeters, and the posterior wall, 1.3 centimeters. We are also at this point going to measure the beginning of the aortic root from side to side, and then we're going to take that measurement and store it. 
Take this and take it to diastole, which is when the heart is squeezing at the end of the squeeze. I'm sorry, systole. And we're going to take the measurement at end systole when the heart is squeezed as tight as it will. And we'll also take a measurement of what's considered to be the LA or left atrium and store that. You'll notice in my case I have an EF or ejection fraction of approximately 71%. Anywhere from 60 to 75 is considered normal. And we'll go back to 2D. So once we've achieved those measurements, then we actually take and rotate into a short axis, a peristernal short axis, which is going to show you several things, including the aortic valve. This would be your aortic valve here in the center. It's going to show me my pulmonic valve and my right outflow tract and pulmonary artery. It's also going to show me my right tricuspid valve in this view over here. From that aortic valve, we're going to put color. Take a picture of the aortic valve in color. We're going to take a picture of the pulmonic artery and the right outflow tract in color. We're going to take what's called a continuous wave Doppler of that pulmonic artery outflow tract. And we're going to go back, if I can get the image to come up for us. I'll change my screen over here a little bit to give us a little bit more window. We're going to go back and take some color on this right outflow or right tricuspid. And we'll take continuous wave through that side also to see if we can determine if the tricuspid valve has any leakage. It doesn't show any, so I don't have to show that to the physician. You also want to zoom in and show the, the physician a nice clean aortic valve shot with all three cusps opening and closing. You can also see in my image here, I don't know if it's visible on the video or not, but it would be visible one of the things that we cover this little white or blackish area right here would be my left coronary artery takeoff, so to speak. So we'll go back and zoom one more time and I'll save it. Nice clean picture for the doctor. After that's done, we're going to pan down and give you a picture of what's called the mitral valve. You'll see the LV and the mitral valve opening and closing. Again, we are going to put color on that valve and take a picture. And then we're going to pan down and actually attempt to show the left ventricle itself without the valve in, in the image. And as I said at the beginning of the tape, I am not the best candidate, especially since I'm scanning myself sitting up. But you can see from this image that gives you a pretty decent look at my left ventricle. And that is what we call the peristernal images that are typically taken during an echo.